What's up guys? We are back for another Marvel Legends review and this is definitely something that I don't normally review or this type of figure is not something I normally review and you're probably going to say, well, why are you reviewing this figure? And frankly, I just think it looks good, so I wanted to buy it. So today we're taking a look at the Target exclusive Captain Marvel Star Force version figure and I just like the way this figure looks. I figure I can kind of fudge it into my comic display somehow. Something about that suit does it for me, those colors. So we've got her here in our standard Marvel Legends packaging. You can see her here in the bubble. We've got our logo down at the bottom. We've got some artwork on the side and then we've got some different artwork on the back. No product shots, but we do also have a bit of a bio. So let's do it. Let's pull her out and take a look. And here she is out of the packaging, guys, our Target exclusive Star Force Captain Marvel figure. And again, this is one that, you know, it's really out of my wheelhouse. It's not exactly the kind of thing that I would generally go for. I say a lot that I don't buy the MCU figures, but Captain Marvel in this particular look and color scheme, it just does it for me. I really like it. I think it works well. And frankly, you know, keeping her like this, she'd probably be okay in a comic setting uh, with all of my other figures because there are very few MCU figures remaining in my collection. They're almost, almost all gone. I just have a small handful these days. So we're going to start as usual, take a look at articulation, see what she can do. Obviously, if you've got any of the other Captain Marvel figures so far, specifically the, the standard Captain Marvel figure, uh, you'll, you'll know what to expect because I believe these are exactly the same figures, just kind of a palette swap here. But the head can go back a little bit, surprisingly not all that far. The helmet hits that neck almost right away. And forward doesn't do much either, so that's kind of odd. I figured it would be a little wider range of motion. Uh, she can, of course, swivel all the way around. Arms go out. The shoulder pads do move to allow that movement. Rotation, you've got rotating and single-jointed elbows. It's going to be about 90 degrees. Hinges and rotation at the wrists. She's got an upper diaphragm twist. Allows you to rock side to side, forwards and backwards, so pretty good motion there. There's nothing at the waist, though. Legs go out, forward, backward. you got a thigh cut, double-jointed knees, and then you've got rockers and hinges down at those ankles. So she's about everything I expected she was going to be, except for that, that head and neck area, and that, that's likely just due to this particular head. So we'll see how things kind of stack up with the extras, because, you know, this figure does come with a bunch of accessories, uh, so she does have a little bit in the way to to play around with her, and then those other heads might have a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to that particular joint. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, obviously I've already said that this particular look does it for me. I do like the Captain Marvel uh, MCU suit. I think it's nice. I think it works really well. It very much kind of fits her look, and that color scheme definitely works for a standard Captain Marvel suit. This color scheme, however, does the whole Kree thing, basically. It evokes a classic Kree color scheme, which is what it's supposed to be. It's obviously not comic accurate in any way, but it, it works. I think it looks really nice in this. I prefer, I prefer this color scheme to the actual red, blue, and gold, personally. So that's the real reason why I, why I picked this up. So there's just a lot of line work in here. Tons of small detail that run down the legs and in the chest. There's a, lots of line work that are across the chest here. They're kind of subtle. They're not very you know, overt. You can't see some of them to your right up on there, but it's mostly the paint on this figure. The metallics and just the shiny nature of the silver and the green really, really does it for me. And there's, you know, tons of more sculpting that go down the back of the figure. I think proportions look pretty good. I'm, I'm just in general happy with the way this figure looks. And frankly, you know, like I've said, this is one that I think I can kind of I can get her in a comic display. So I just happen to like this particular figure. There's nothing about it that made me say, oh, I just absolutely have to get this MCU figure because it's a specific MCU figure. It all came down to the look. I think the paint is applied really nicely. I like the sculpt of this figure to begin with. And then it all comes down to kind of a personal preference thing for me. The silver and the green just absolutely works. And I think it works really nicely in the confines of this suit and its overall design. Now, do I need a bunch of them to make a bunch of variant figures because of all the accessories? No, but I do like the fact that you can go down that road if you want to. Of course, we've got to talk about the head sculpt, at least some, and frankly, this is the head sculpt that I'm going to be using for this particular figure. It's one of the reasons why I wanted it, because I really like that full green mask that she has, the nice black accents, the white 
pupilless eyes. You got the smirk going on with the face, I think is really nicely applied, very well sculpted. And then I really like the mohawk look that she has with this particular helmet. So it's just aesthetically pleasing to me. I think, again, the paint is nicely done, sculpt is nicely done. You know, if you're into Captain Marvel stuff, I think this is definitely one to get a hold of for sure, specifically just because of this look. But this head sculpt in this color scheme absolutely ties the whole thing together. Now, when it comes to accessories for this figure, the first thing you can do without going full bore and changing the entire figure up is to swap the heads. So Captain Marvel proper has one accessory. She has got the swappable head sculpt here uh, that has the Brie Larson head, so the photo reel printed head, and I think the likeness is decent enough. I think it's all right. I don't think it's Hasbro's greatest effort, but it's clean, and the line work is really nice. The printing is very, very spot on, I think. I don't have any issues there. I think the hair is kind of funky looking. I don't particularly care for this kind of marbly, weird wash going on. But the head sculpt on its own is pretty decent. I think the likeness is pretty close. I don't think it's perfect again, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be using this head either. The whole reason I got this was for the armored look. So it's decent enough, uh, but there is so much more to this figure when it comes to accessories. And for the rest of the accessories, you have got the option to make an entirely different character. Of course, if you wanted to make both, you would need two different figures, and then you'd be left with a tremendous number of extra accessories but we're not going to go into that. So you've got the option to transform this Captain Marvel figure into Minerva, another character from the movie. You may know her as Dr. Minerva from the comics. She doesn't look anything like this in the comics. Similar in terms of skin tone in some fashion, but not the overall outfit. Um, so this one is kind of interesting because she sort of looks like what she looks like in, in the movie promo images and trailers and stuff like that so far. But I haven't seen enough, or I haven't seen anything where she looks specifically like this. She does have the rifle. Uh, she does have kind of a holster on her side. I've never seen her with a bandolier. She has the scarf. She's got this particular hairstyle, but her hair seems to hang a little lower. And I don't think I've seen her with a mask on either. We don't have the, the mask around her eyes. Usually you just see her face. So I'm not sure if this is 100% supposed to be MCU accurate, or if it's kind of a blending of the comics. Because in the comics, she has that mask. I'm not really sure. I'm just going to kind of judge it based on what we have here. So we've got a pretty decent head sculpt, all things considered. I think the hair sculpt is really nice. The paint wash in there is really nice. There's some, you know, kind of red highlights in there almost with that fluorescent blue. I really like the skin tone on the face. The lips pop. The whole the whole head really pops against the body. You've got the uh, scarf that you have to put on. And you could, I suppose, use the scarf and the bandolier and the gun uh, with Captain Marvel in some fashion. She cannot actually hold the gun. Uh, because of the fact that they have different hands. So Minerva's got a trigger finger hand and she's got a gripping hand with blue fingers sticking out of the, the glove holes. So that's why you really can't use them. And then you've got this bandolier that has what looks kind of like the holster that you see in promo images uh, for Minerva because she usually has a sidearm on her hip in the images I've seen. So I don't know if that's where that came from or not. I do like this gun. It looks very uh, looks very Cree-ish. It looks very futuristic. Just a silver gun with like kind of a metallic blue swirl going on it, similar to what's on her what's on her mask, and then what's on the rounds that are on her bandolier. So you know, it's it's an interesting idea here. Again, I don't know what the intent was behind this thing. It still to me seems like it's a blending of comic and MCU because this is definitely not what I've seen. That is to say that you know maybe I just haven't seen some things where she looks more like this. But otherwise, I think it's an interesting concept for them to be able to mash these two into one package. And if you want both figures, you have the option to just, again, you've got to get two of them. So overall, for someone who does not get into the MCU side of the house really ever these days, I'm still pretty happy with this figure. Again, I went into this for a specific reason. I think that this particular figure looks close enough to comic book style of, of figures that she works well for my interests. And I think she pairs up well with the recent Genus Vell, for example. The color scheme very much works. But if you're into the MCU side of things, then this is probably a no-brainer anyway. The suit's a nice sculpt. The color scheme definitely works. Uh, I really dig that helmeted head. You've got an extra unhelmeted head if you really want that. And then if you want this Minerva figure, Figure, then it's a no-brainer, frankly, because on its own, whether I think it looks exactly MCU-ish or not, it's a winner. I think she very much works well when you've pieced that one together. So it's an interesting idea with all these pack-ins to make two different figures, but I think MCU folks are definitely going to like this one. So that's going to do it for this look at the Target exclusive Star Force Captain Marvel. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.